some of my earliest memories are related to events which, in normal circumstances, one should never experience. I was born in Georgia in a difficult time. After regaining its independence from the Soviet Union in the early 90s, I saw the country go through a lot of trouble. First war I remember as a six-year-old forced our family out of our hometown. Together with 200,000 others, we fled the ethnic cleansing of Georgians in Abkhazia region of the country. 30,000 people perished here in a genocide committed by Russian-backed separatists. Throughout the 90s, the whole country was trying to recover from the consequences of this conflict, but the peace didn't last for long, and in 2008, Georgia faced yet another intervention. This time, Russia committed to a full-scale invasion, and within a few days, the army just took over the strategically important cities and highways, paralyzing the country. The inefficiency of the international community to stop, if not prevent this, left us face to face with an overwhelming force as we saw an unreal scenario unfold. As a result of this invasion, Russia established control over 20% of Georgian territory, a position in which they remain to this day. After the hostilities ended, they started setting up a razor wire fence to mark the occupied land. Arbitrarily cutting through the country, this border separates regions, villages, indiscriminately separating people occasionally moved even further into Georgian territory. It's set up amid a village or on somebody's land, destroying whatever is left of the local communities and keeping the whole country basically in a state of terror. But while this border itself causes much harm, it hides from the rest of the world the actions of the occupying forces which are committed inside the occupied land where no international organization is allowed to enter or monitor their actions. Behind the razor wire fence, Georgian villages are being burned down, demolished, and then even the ruins completely removed from the area, leaving behind basically empty, empty meadows. This is the village Kremo Achabeti just before the war. On the second satellite image, just after the conflict, you can see how every single house is burned down. On the next image, there is no trace of a village anymore. In an attempt to erase and rewrite history, the whole landscape has been changed and the traces of the local population completely erased. Last summer, on the 10th anniversary of the Russian invasion, as I was going through my memories and the footage of the, of the events, I decided to dedicate my graduation project at Design Academy, Eindhoven, um, to this subject. I started working on this theme, asking myself, what can design do? Or maybe to be more modest, what can I do in design in relation to this problem? Uh, and I started, first of all, researching the archive satellite images of the area, and I mapped the 16 disappeared villages. The resulting interactive installation allows to explore this remaining evidence by juxtaposing the chronological layers of the satellite images. It creates a counterintuitive experience where your shadow on the projection as you're standing in the light is actually revealing a layer of hidden information. As the viewers scan through seemingly empty landscapes, the location and the structure of the villages emerge in their shadows. But my initial intention in this project was not to remain a passive observer, but rather to demonstrate my position in an active gesture the situation of the local population in this hopeless confrontation felt like 
similar to a natural disaster. It felt as if we were facing some sort of a hurricane that would flatten anything on its way and no one could do anything against it. Dark as it seemed though, I carried on with this analogy and I tried to use it as an approach. If I'm faced with an overwhelming force, it is true that I cannot control it or alter its course, but maybe I can mine it or maybe I can tap into it in some way and use its energy against itself. With this attitude, I looked at different manifestations of the occupation and I targeted the very weapon used to enforce it, which is the razor wire fence. Examining it as a, just a structure of metal in the landscape, I was looking for properties that I could use to my advantage. In my research, I found a uh, beautiful old radio tower, ironically in Moscow. And as I saw this uh, form, it immediately sparked the question, if this structure can be used for communication, why can't this structure be used for something similar? More research into the properties of the fence showed that it was actually possible. And my plan for its transformation slowly started to acquire shape. I designed and built a radio transmitter that connects to the razor wire fence and converts it into an antenna. Through this antenna, it broadcasts a simple message in Morse code. The content of the message is the names of the disappeared villages and their geographic coordinates. Stating these names and putting them where they belong. It forces the fence to voice what it's meant to hide. While Russian occupation is gradually expanding at the expense of these villages, there are even more illegal and immoral borders set up in many corners of the world by transforming a weapon like a razor wire fence into a tool of protest, but also into a monument for the vanished villages, I wanted to make a point, and not to prove that fences make extraordinary antennas, or <laughs> for sure not to inspire Russians to start broadcasting some propaganda through them in my country, <laughs> no. Uh, but to make a point that creativity can be used not only towards the things that are already quite nice to make them even nicer, but it can be used as a powerful tool to address the most complex, urgent, and hurtful issues. And I think we should. Thank you. <laughs>